The morning star drive on 17.8. You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride, and it's time to fly. So let's realign, just listen if you want. Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome to the MSC on 117.8. It's Tuesday. November 19th, and we are so happy for you joining us on the MSC on 117.8 today. Uh, so, you know, with that, you know, how's everyone doing, right? If you have any, um, you know, questions you would have for Pastor Sky for the Q&A on Thursday, make sure to get that to him. Uh, and I hope that you're having a wonderful start to the week, right? Like, you know, this week's message was uh, so incredibly amazing, right? It's like a lot of these topics, um, you know, the, the general topics have been covered quite a bit right over the years but i think like in their specific construction and like the specific like subtopics like underneath it's like kind of like been a long time since i've like heard some of them and so it's like it's like really really cool um that something has been talking about this and the trinity has been getting us to to think about this too right even like this idea of like preparing right like preparing something like specific like having a plan to testify and to share the word right so that it's it's better right so that we're not just like working off the fly like that was really really cool um and so uh, like i was kind of like wondering what to talk about today <laughs> and you know i i did want to follow up uh i think i i guess i'll do this first like following up on um on the the what happened last week right because this was a crazy week right and so uh, I think I shared with you guys about that dinner thing that we planned and it was crazy like everything that happened um and it's been an incredibly busy week uh just things just kind of snowballed and and happened all of a sudden and you know it, <laughs> It, a, a good thing but a scary thing is i feel like this is just a start right so that's always like a terrifying thing right like when you feel like a kind of a lot happened but then when you know right that it, this isn't like the end but this is more the beginning right and i, I don't know like if if you guys have had uh, experienced that before and i'm sure you have in, di in different forms um because a big thing is is like we know that like it, like even in the context of evangelism right like if even if a, a, a newcomer has learned like really well once like the first time or someone who you didn't expect to like come to church or or learn the word like starts learning right just because they started learning it doesn't mean that's over uh and, and that's actually just the beginning right but uh because it was a crazy week because all these things happened it, it was like kind of like uh, it was a couple of things, right? You know, definitely so for a lot of it, I was like on cloud nine, like, oh my gosh, like all of this is happening, right? Like, oh, this is so great. At the same time, I was like, oh my gosh, like there's so much happening, right? And I hope this goes well, right? Not just, not just now, but uh, going into the future. Uh, but yeah, like, so basically like, um, I think because I don't, I don't know what time I recorded last time but uh, it may have been at, at this time, right? So it was really incredible, right? So last time I was telling you guys that, um, you know, we had planned, uh, you know, this, this, I planned this dinner thing and invited a bunch of people over, even though I didn't have anything like for these people, right? And then like, you know, that was kind of like, because I really felt that uh, I had to take that opportunity to evangelize. And I really felt it strongly last week that I can't just let, uh, time pass without doing this um, and I'll be honest I think uh, growing up and even now evangelism is something that's uh, that like I find challenging at, at times right like opening my mouth and asking people if they want to to learn the word and over this last year and a half like before coming to law school too I think I've been doing it more like connecting with lives and not not just not necessarily just connecting them straight to bible study right away but like speaking about faith and like sharing about our experiences and testifying those things have definitely become more natural right like i've been doing it more and more and more and so i highly encourage for everyone to be able to do that like in their private lives as well um and yeah like i think it's something you give the perfect message right like to tell us how to do it like in a better way right like to plan to think about it all right and not just like work off the fly at every time of course there will be opportunities when it comes up and so figuring out how to apply this week's message is very crucial right like you can plan for specific people right maybe and, and you guys can feel free to let me know like how you think 
the, the the best way to apply the message is right like do you think that having like a planned like method in your back pocket is the way to go right so that when the opportunity presents itself that you can share right regardless of maybe the the context and, and the person or should you be person specific to right or all the above like should you plan for a specific person like let's say there's someone you you want to evangelize um you know should you plan things out for that one person uh i mean i i think you know there's both too but actually like yesterday when that message was coming out i was thinking about a very specific person uh, in mind uh but like to kind of share like what actually happened last week right like now that it's 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 all gone through uh yes so on monday you know uh, i was scrambling over the weekend to ask people to to learn and uh a total of six newcomers joined on monday to learn the word so it was it was incredible like it just it, it came up out, out of nowhere right and so at first i was like oh my gosh okay i think like even even by sunday night i was like i think there's at least two people confirmed and i, I have no idea who else is coming uh, but then ended up like six of them. Like I, like, I think I asked like maybe eight or, or, or so of them, and right? So like six out of eight of them like confirmed and they joined, right? And so uh, Minister Cameron from Atlanta, you know, taught Sunstop. And Mel, uh, Rachel's mom, right? Like she joined and uh, it was really great to have her. And it, like it, it was just like the way it worked out was incredible because at first, right, I think I told you, right, like I was really hoping to evangelize this one guy, uh, but then he invited a girl, and then I was like, okay, like, I mean, and the girl's nice too, and I know she um, was Christian and she has like, uh, you know, she's she's a good person from what I've seen so far. So I was like, okay, it's it's fine, and so because it it was them, and I didn't want to make it just the two of them. I was like, okay, let me invite other people as well then, right? So then I started inviting other people, some people who I have spoken to about faith um, and, and other people who, like, I was like, oh, maybe they'll be interested, right? And so, um, yeah, like, so six newcomers joined and they, you know, we got to have a bit of an introduction. You know, they got to meet, you know, other Providence members uh, and they learned the word about Sunstop. And I think Minister Cameron did, like, an awesome job and people were, like, really moved and they're like, wow, like, I've never heard this before. Right, and so that feeling is always great, right? Having newcomers be like, wow, like I've never heard this before, right? And even for something, uh, not to say something as basic as some stuff, but like really, right? Like if that's the first thing and already from the first thing, they're like, wow, I've never heard this before. Then like you can only go up, right? And it, it, the fact that we can only go up from there is is incredible. And so, you know, we had that over like, like midway through the day on Monday. And then, you know, on on for dinner right i was i had like these like 10 of these people coming and actually most of the ones who came to the lesson did not end up coming to the dinner right except for like a handful of them so maybe two out of the six of them came to the dinner and then I had like eight other people from school coming uh, and i'll be honest i think most of the other people who came to the dinner uh, like currently at least I, I didn't think of them as like prospects for being evangelized right like um, th their backgrounds are like all different but you know um, you know maintaining friendly relations with, uh, uh, re relations with uh, all of them and you know who knows like maybe it, you know God will prove me wrong right and like there's someone here who, who needs to learn and who can learn the word uh, but I, I feel like at least for the time being these are all people who need like the, the feel of their, of their hearts to be tilled and to be worked a little bit before the, 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 the seeds can be sown. Uh, but but even that time it was great, but I was like scrambling. Like so from, from set, wow, like this, like how is the timing of this is gone is like so crazy, right? Because on, 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 on Saturday, uh, the past Saturday, uh, I had like an eight hour riding final, right? So on Friday from like 3 p.m. to 10 p.m., I was preparing for this final and then Saturday it was like an eight hour uh, period where I had to work on this assignment. And as soon as this eight hour period was over, I ran out to go get like uh, groceries and chairs and tables and stuff uh, for Monday and, you know, was collaborating with Minister Cameron and, and Mel and um, other members to uh, plan for the, for the lesson as well. 
Uh, and then after that, as soon as the lesson was over, I had to go home and start preparing everything. And, and thank God, like, uh, God gave me the inspiration. The Holy Spirit inspired me to do, uh, like, hot pot, <laughs> right? And I don't know if you guys have had it before, but it's like, you know, it's like shabu shabu in a sense, too. So um, there's not a lot of, like, actual uh, cooking and preparing in advance. I just have to wash and prepare everything. But even that, you know, it takes a long time, especially if you're feeding, like, a, a large group of people but you know the, the the people were like they were so thankful they were excited about it many of them was like their first time eating in that sense and i think they just enjoyed not being in a school setting and meeting um and so for me that was like really big too because you know i i love people and i also really dislike people <laughs> but like like I, I think i love people because i want to help them i want them to learn the word i want them to be successful on on the spiritual side and the physical side too so whatever i can do to help them in that sense i want to do it and i recognize that we can't rush it and so sometimes the, the physical side is the way to get to them, right? It's to show them God's love, is to show them the Lord's love, and to show the word, right, through our actions. And so, uh, you know, th th that's, the, that's the only reason why I would do something like this dinner, right? Okay, versus like if it was Providence people, I would have them over all the time, right? <laughs> but for the, for the people who like haven't gotten to that, that status yet, I'm like, okay, I'm doing this in the hopes that this leads to, to something for each of them in the future. But yeah, so dinner was amazing you know people were over and i was wiped after that i was like wiped um and it didn't help that it, it was really not great that i was wiped because you know on top of this i still have like a bunch of school work to do right and so uh like uh, it, we're really entering probably our busiest cycle um and i have my finals uh coming up in the next few weeks and so i have maybe like two and a half weeks maybe three weeks to be preparing for finals and so i really need to buckle down and like get things done uh for school as well and so like you know that being said like there's a bunch of things happening and so uh i like, there's so many things that are, are going on that i really need to use uh, time wisely like i think um i feel like this is probably like the most time pressured uh, time period that, that I've been in right? like if I think about all the things going on for school as well as like these various different like evangelism things going on uh, as well as like you know there's things uh, we're, we're starting to do for second gen and for SS <laughs> and then now people are reaching out to me about online ministry efforts and so there's a lot of different things going on right so it's, it's like kind of everything is snowballing and so i really have to pray to to have the sermon to do things properly but the monday story does not end there and this is crazy too right like this is this is like wow it, it, this is crazy so uh, rachel gave me the idea to share the rest of the story and i uh, thank you rachel for uh, doing so but so after monday um, you know, the, the reaction from everyone was so positive, like from the newcomers and also from uh, like the team that, that was uh, that helped out to, to teach and to be there. Because, um, you know, um, on I think it was maybe it was Sunday. I actually don't even know if I um, told you guys that uh, Mel from Houston, Rachel's mom, that she was uh, planning on joining uh, by the time that I was recording last week. But, you know, she heard that, you know, all these law students were going to be learning. And so she reached out to Rachel saying, like, oh, my gosh, like, I would love to teach and I would love to help out and stuff like that. And I was so thankful because, you know, I think I shared with you guys that I didn't know how to go about. Right. Like I knew like I knew I wanted to evangelize. I wanted to do something here while I'm in school. I didn't want to make the time that I'm in school just about you know, getting this degree and just about doing that, right? So even though I'm alone, I'm, I'm, I'm in a new place, right? Like here in Florida, there's no other church members, but I was like, okay, I need to make something happen. And I know that I can do exactly what I'm doing now and try to handle everything, but that wasn't optimal. And so like when, uh, when, when Cameron and when, when Mel, when all these people started reaching out, uh, pre-pastor Wan Chan in LA, even Elder Tian back at home, like they like just, just like asked if they could help out and stuff like that. All of it just happened within a span of a few days, right? Within a span of a few weeks. And so like, it, there was like nothing in the works and it's suddenly all these things in the works. Um, and so after Monday, um, like, you know, like one of the things we were praying about too is that like there were 
like uh, there's a mix right of guys and girls like in that initial setting and you know at least for the first few that might be okay but for for one like even having a large group thing as we get deeper and deeper into the message it might be hard right because we need to gauge like individual reactions to and see how they're learning and teach and maybe small groups are okay but you know we we can't have like uh, I, mean, I, I mean i guess there's always a way to do it but like trying to teach six people with completely different personalities like uh the messages as they get deeper and deeper and trying to engage with them uh you know throughout in that sense it, it's definitely more challenging than uh, doing things one-on-one -on -one. and we were also trying to figure out like how to like naturally segue to like kind of maybe splitting things off between guys and girls um, and I didn't really know how to do it right away. Um, and so like, I was really praying about this. And now that it's like after the fact, I think it seems like it, it went really well. But in the moment, I was like really praying about it and like thinking about it and like, God, like, how do I do this? Right. So like last week's message, it was like t telling us to take action perfectly according to the Holy Spirit's will. And so like I like from Sunday to all the way to Wednesday, I was like, you know, praying constantly right for that right that i'd be praying according to the, uh and doing things according to the holy spirit's will um and then so this is crazy right like and i know like we've had many crazy stories about evangelism and that you yourselves right in when you were being evangelized you may have had a crazy periods too like crazy periods of listening to the word like you know in, in different settings but after monday I'm like looking at our calendar and I'm looking at our schedule and I'm, I'm looking at what's happening this week for me now and the, and the upcoming few weeks. And I'm like so busy, right? There's like, and, and within the next few weeks, like people are getting more and more stressed out, right? Because now it's like final season and, and this is a very important term. Um, and so uh, because of that, I was like, oh, man, I don't know if for the rest of the semester, whether we can have Bible study or not because people are going to be so busy and like I'm going to be like in and out of town and stuff too and so are other people and so I was like man like if is this it right like because this is the first time that we're meeting but it, is this going to be the last time for the semester um, because like even yeah like sure we'll be busy but you know the time le that we have left is maybe about uh, a month from now yeah so we have like exactly a month till the end of finals and so it's like wow like does that mean that for this month and then for winter break afterwards that there's going to be nothing right and so uh like I i've been in undergrad before and been part of campus ministry before like you can work for an entire quarter to teach someone and then when they come back it's like you're kind of having to start from from square one right because of that uh, but, uh, you know, there's uh, like there's a couple differences now that I think about it. Like one of the, th the things is like these are all people that I'm relatively close to now. And so because there's that like working relationship, I think picking things back up may be a little bit different. Uh, whereas before in undergrad, most of the people that we were working to evangelize uh, were people that we were meeting like, you know, on the college campus that I didn't know previously that I didn't have that working relationship with. And so, of course, while we had that connection through the word, um, as we began to teach them, uh, it doesn't mean that I knew them before that, before then. So it's, it was really like reconnecting with the stranger after afterwards. But uh, so there's a bit of a difference here. Uh, but because of that, I was like, OK, man, like I, I don't really like pushing people like for myself personally. I, I like I really don't like forcing someone to do something or or like even if there's like <laughs> the semblance of, of looking like I'm forcing someone I tend not to go in that direction but I was like but this is so important um, and you know I really don't know what would happen like, I really don't know what's gonna happen with them so on like, I think like on on Tuesday or Wednesday uh, I remember I asked uh, like one of the girls who came and she's the one who maybe I've talked the most about faith with alongside Josh that initial guy and so I was telling her I was like hey one of our classes ends that we would normally have on Thursday so we have this like three hour gap between our classes would you guys be interested in having like another Bible study because I recognize that it may be tougher for the remainder of the semester to meet and she was like really enthusiastic about it and uh, maybe this is part of that 
uh, this is this is definitely part of that um, uh, of this week's message about planning, right? And so it's not to say that this conversation with her was planned, but you know uh, there was definitely the the essence of a plan, <laughs> right? Like because I, I was really trying to think about okay, how do I get them to relearn again like this week within such a short turnaround, right? So we learn they learned on Monday. And then they have to relearn on Thursday, right? And so it was like a three-day uh, window, and not just that, but that means that we need. I needed to ask like the the lecturers if if they could lecture and uh, plan together, like with the uh, with the, the team to kind of work with this too. And so I was like juggling all these things like, on top of classes, right? And so it was crazy. It was like really like uh, like. Uh, trying to think about how to do this and so yeah the girl was was excited and it worked out because um i think on on either on it's probably tuesday tuesday or wednesday like i was at the library um and she was there she's always at the library and there's a handful of like uh, of people who are always there and there's another guy who i was trying to evangelize who was also there too um, and <laughs> this may be one of the prayer requests, um, and, and I, I actually don't know if I shared this with everyone, but, um, yeah, I was trying to evangelize this guy, but I also kind of get the feeling that he may be interested in this girl. Like, it, 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 I could be wrong, right, and I, I hope I'm wrong, but but that was one of the the concerns that i had that right like that, that this guy's interested in this girl and so because of that like i was kind of concerned and so when i saw them at the library um i kind of like joined in their conversation so that they're not just talking amongst themselves uh, and it, i i didn't do it in any in, in any suspicious way and i think especially on the girl's side she, i don't think she's like thinking of the guy as like being interested in her and I don't know if I'm reading too much into it, but it, that's just the feeling that I got. And so because of that, I, you know, I didn't try to make it too obvious. Um, and, um, you know, I was just like talking to, to them. Uh, and then eventually he had to go take an exam like halfway through like a practice exam. And so I, I don't know what kind of things we, we talked about, but, you know, I was sharing with the girl, uh, with, with Hannah, like some of the different uh, components of the word, like, uh, I remember um, telling her, like, you know how we draw the three triangle chart and then we show like history kind of going upwards, right? And then like the principle of miniaturization and magnification and like going through how like, you know, God has a will, right? And history, like it, it's not like, you know, when you draw a timeline, it's flat, right? It, the line is horizontal and we just kind of think of it like that. But, you know, when we look at God's history, it's constantly elevating in level and going up and right and god's plan for us is, is better than, than, than our plan right so these are some of the, the different things so i think that was kind of like really priming uh her to think about it like this and she said you know she's never heard a lot of this stuff before um and uh, i was sharing with some of my experience like what like part of the reason why i really came to pursue faith uh, it was really about forgiveness Right. And I was telling her, like, when I was growing up, when I was little, I didn't really see a big difference between uh, people who didn't believe and people who did believe. Like, I knew there was a difference, but especially when, you know, people who believed had this kind of this imperfection and, and, and conflicts amongst themselves. Um, and, like, and I saw conflicts within the, the church, within the family. I was like, wow, like, you know, is there really a big difference? Right. I thought this is supposed to be like this ideal world of peace. Uh, as in like Isaiah 11 um, and this like this holy mountain and people, you know, getting along in the sense and they had the perfect word, but how come people are imperfect? Right? And that was something that I really grappled and wrestled with when I was young. Um, and I told her it wasn't until I got to high school that I saw like the big difference, um, like towards like mid to late high school. Right. And like, I, I told her that the like the story of like my friend being uh, being cheated on. Right. By. Uh, like by you know the, the girl that he was dating like cheated on him with his best friend right <laughs> and uh, you know it wasn't just uh, like th like what happened between them that like really made me see the difference like okay even that's a huge thing right but um, like after that like almost everyone in our grade in our school got involved in that in in some sense right like they wanted like some people were just gossiping and they wanted to know other people were getting directly involved like between them or with him and i was like i was just flabbergasted i was like you know this really isn't anyone's 
um, situation to be involved in, right? Like, why is everyone, like, interjecting themselves? Like, I was one of his closest friends, and even I was trying not to be involved in it, right? And so, and I, I know I've uh, told this uh, story in, in part before, so I won't share the entire thing. Uh, if you're curious, you know, I can definitely <laughs> share at a latter point. But, you know, there were some parts of this that, you know, now that looking back on this, like, years later, that, you know, that God really helped me through. And that, you know, I was able to share some of something stories, too. Uh, oh, and oh, this was one of the big things, right? Because something knows some stories about Jesus that really no one else knows, right? And so I don't know if you guys have all heard this one before, but this is a shocking one too, right? And so um, I think, you know, something was sharing to us about, um, like, you know, the story of the, you know, the, uh, the woman that was caught committing adultery, right? And like people bring her, right, to test Jesus, right? To see what he would do. Um, and, uh, you know, he stoops down in the ground and starts like, uh, drawing something right on the ground right and then like after a long time he like stands up and he says right like mm, you know let it, let the person without sin right throw the first stone right and then people start dissipating and leaving and so I, I was sharing with her that you know like my pastor you know he's prayed about this like a, a lot and um and he's like someone who's read the bible like four or five hundred times um to figure all of these things out and, you know, he, you know, heard from like Jesus in a revelation that what Jesus was writing down on the ground was everyone's sins, right? Like with uh, like adultery, with like all of these different kinds of things, like all the things that were in people's hearts and the things that they had done. And so when they saw that, you know, they couldn't help but be convicted in their hearts, right? And they and they left. Right. And so like she was she was shocked by that. And so, of course, you know, like when we share these things, sometimes we have to be like we have to be wise with how we, we, we do it. Right. So that's kind of like this week's message. I, I wanted to throw that caveat in there. Right. But but like these are things that only we know in Providence and not just that, like maybe, you know, like even as that Jesus time, people will take our message. Well, people will take our stories and they will run in, and go and tell it to other people in different sense. But we are the origin. And Sunsingham is the origin and the trin what the Trinity are, are doing in Providence here is the origin. And so like people can make pale uh, uh, imitations and people can try to make it into their purposes. But it, nothing is as strong as what comes from the source, right? Like the people who own it taking action is completely different. Um, and so, yes, we can share it and we can share it in a wise way and we can share it in a, in a way that is much more powerful than just conveying that knowledge. Right. So because of that, I think she was really primed to uh, relearn on Thursday. And I was really hoping that the other people would, too. And I was actually even more hoping that the guy like Josh, that he would be more ready uh, for Thursday again. But he had he was actually you know the person who i kind of planned all this for initially so even sunday dinner i had planned for him and thank god he joined the the the, the bible study on monday and his name is josh right and the story was about sunstop and joshua and so like he was like really enthusiastic about it and he was very grateful and i think he uh, because he got to connect with uh, Minister Cameron before, uh, so learning this time was very natural, and I think he uh, really liked uh, learning uh, together and learning with Minister Cameron. And so that was great, but he wasn't able to make it out to the dinner, even though, like, it was he, he was pretty much the one that I planned all this for, <laughs> right? But then, um, like, uh, at least this girl, like, he, uh, Josh had some other thing he had to do in the evening. He had some medical circumstance, so he couldn't make it. Uh, but at least this girl, like, she uh, was connected, and she wanted to learn on Thursday. And so because there was one person... I started asking everyone else again. I, I asked Josh. I asked that other girl. I asked like some other guys uh, who, you know, the, the ones that joined on Monday, as well as some other people if they want to join on Thursday. And so I, I, I got um, some other new people interested. They didn't end up coming on Thursday, but they were interested. They, they wanted to do Bible study. So that was cool too, right? So yeah, really from like one seed, the, the more that we evangelize, the more people can get connected, right? And so like I was asking people in class, but like, hey, like, we're going to do this on Thursday day because we have that gap would you be interested he's like and, and people were like oh wow like I, I would love to I have something at that time but like let me know if you do it again because I, I really think I could use that in law school so that was crazy like so all of that was really moving 
And then so um, after like at least getting um, this girl's confirmation, you know, we uh, I was like talking with Cameron and Mel and and, and uh, Pro Pastor Wanchan and stuff. And, um, you know, uh, Mel had planned to teach this lesson uh, because we were trying to figure out everyone's style, like see what it's like. Um, I think we have never been like uh, we have never worked in a team to evangelize before. Um, and so we wanted to see like what the newcomers like, like what how best to proceed. So it's everything. This is like just the second time. Right. So uh, Mel graciously, you know, planned to teach uh, the story of Noah. Because uh, I, re I really wanted to get them to have a sense of like what time we're living in, like what kind of things that we should be thinking about. And so like when Mel prepared, wow, like she prepared in the perfect way for this one girl. Because I invited all these other people and this time for the majority of it, it was just this one girl. Like there was this other guy um, <laughs> who's name was also Josh and he was planning on joining he really wanted to join like he kind of I, I actually didn't ask him but when I um, like I was asking you know the other people who had been there on Monday and Josh was in the vicinity and he was like wow like I would love to do Bible study and so I was like oh okay right I mean like when how could we say no to someone who like is putting their foot forward and saying they want Bible study so I was like okay yeah yeah sure bro like yeah, come out and so I gave him the details but, you know, we had like class like right up until before Bible study. And so Josh, like, you know, he couldn't like come out and he couldn't join until the last 15 minutes. And so it was supposed to be the two of them at least. Um, uh, but, you know, it ended up being mostly just Hannah. And I think um, you know, like, like God really worked through Mel to connect to Hannah. And I'm so grateful to Mel, to Cameron. Uh, Tien and and um, and uh, Wan Chan were there too, and you know Elder Tien's youngest daughter Lucy was on camera. And she was adorable, and I think um, both uh, Hannah and Josh like loved seeing Lucy too. Uh, but it was so amazing that they came together. I think uh, I know that Hannah was like deeply moved by uh, the Thursday Bible study and, and the Monday one too. And uh, it was kind of a natural segue because afterwards, uh, you know, uh, Mel shared that she would love to teach um, uh, Hannah separately, right? That she had a, a really good feeling about Hannah. And I was like, well, yeah, this could be a natural segue to kind of splitting things off between guys and girls. Um, and so because of that, you know, I, I, I asked Hannah, he's like, hey, uh, you know, Mel said that she, she really liked you and um, you know, she would love to kind of do things separately with you if that's okay. And Hannah was like, yeah, I would love that. And so, you know, uh, I gave them each other's contact information and, you know, I think we'll be involved. And <laughs> uh, I, I know uh, Rachel's listening to this, so I won't out her. Uh, but she may be involved. <laughs> it, it, that, that, well, that's what I've heard from uh, from Mel. But yes, I won't out her unless um, she's willing to out herself. But uh, it would be great, right? So it, it, this is really interesting for me. Like I, I haven't been principally involved with female evangelism. So I, I'm a, I'll be honest. I'm a little wary, like because I just don't know how to to go about it, right? And it's it's not to say that you know I find it impossible or anything. But, you know, I, I know that like, I don't necessarily want to be the principal one, like uh, in terms of management, I, I don't want to do anything that goes uh, like past the line, right? That could be misinterpreted. And I don't want to do things that, you know, are, are not proper either. So, you know, those are concerns I'm working through. But um, more than the concerns, like the great things that are happening are, are really incredible and amazing. And so just want to share uh, that story. And so, yeah, we kind of like uh, went way long with this story. And so with that, we'll just have our, our one break for today. And then we'll go into 2G Talks with Rachel to wrap up today's Tuesday segment. comes down to this it is attack and defense you must be good at both only then will you find success in life what is attack it is into the work you should do each day and defense is to confront problems you face each and every day 
on the earth No matter who you are There is just one path Leading you to life Just the attack and defend You can do this If you will serve and love Our Lord God forever All that you've been entrusted Render with love and peace Life of success Glory and victory Your life comes down to this It is attack and defense You must be good at both Only then will you find success in life Peace out! What is attack? It is to do the work you should do each day And defense is to confront problems you face each and every day Here on the earth, no matter who you are There is just one path leading you to life Just the attack and defend can do this if you will serve and love our Lord God forever. All that you've been entrusted, render it through love and peace. Life of success, glory and victory. 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 Welcome back, everyone. Rachel here with 2G Talks. If you haven't already, please feel free to comment, leave a like, or if you would like to shoot me an email at 2GTalks at gmail.com, please feel free. Y'all know me already. I love to talk, and especially for this week's segment, I have a lot of content to cover, so I'm just going to go ahead and get right into it. So first off, I wanted to touch up on the Sunday message. So if you remember, the Sunday message had two titles for this week. The first title was, When Sharing the Word, You Should Deliver It With Wise Planning and Testify To. The second title was, Do Not Just Pray, But Take Action. And honestly, you know, we had a word sharing at my church after service. And I heard everyone's word sharing, and they're really powerful But for me, I truly felt like this message was a great message in the fact that it was almost as if Sansanam had given a message directly on how to raise second John. What do I mean about that? Well, in the message, Sansanam talked about how we have to teach people about how good providence is. People won't know unless you tell them, right? And this sentence especially applies to second John, growing up in providence. Whenever you're growing up in Providence, or if you've even been here for a long time, it's kind of natural and expected to hear a lot of words about tribulations, difficulties. We're always told to repent. Judgment is coming due to the world's sin, etc., etc. Things like that. And because of things like that, you know, it's not always, but very often doom and gloom, kind of. And so it can be very common for second gen to have this perspective that providence is not a lot of fun that is just a lot of struggling it's a lot of hardship to be in providence which it is but in the message too god said that we 
have to use womandong as if we own it. And I applied this kind of mentality, this sentence of ownership, not only to womandong, but how we have to make this history our own. We have to take action with the authority as an owner. You know, I've met a lot of second gen who unfortunately never really gained that ownership or mentality of providence being theirs. They were simply just in providence because their parents told them to be without them really clearly knowing and because of that went through so many misunderstandings. And there's a lot of second gen I believe who struggle thinking, why do my parents force me to believe? Is this history even true if I'm being forced? Is this a cult? And I've even had a lot of instances where I've talked to second gen who feel as if their parents don't even love them. That they were born just to be another number or another member in Providence. Which is absolutely not true and a terrible misunderstanding. But this kind of mentality has caused a lot of hurt and pain within second gen and their parents and of course in families overall. Which is why when Sansanam said that we have to instill hope within people, only then will their hearts and thoughts change, I really felt like he was talking to second gen. Providence, when you're taught correctly, when you have that proper foundation of faith and love, is really... I don't know how to describe it. When I think about Providence, I feel like it's what being in love is like. You know, it's a lot of fun. I look forward to listening to the word every Sunday. I love interacting and being with other Providence people. You know, generally, Providence people are really, really good people. And in the world, it's so hard to find people that you can trust or connect with. But it's really easy to do so in Providence. And you really are never alone in Providence. Because God is always with us. Try living in a world without God. Try. It sucks. (laughs) You can't do it. It, it really isn't living if you're not with God. And plus, there's so many things to gain from providence. Not only life skills, but even more kind of interpersonal things like confidence or pride within yourself whenever you take action on the word. And I could go on about the benefits and joys of being in providence, which I do plan on doing on a separate time. But I really did feel as well, when Sansanam said during the message, that people only come to providence if they're benefited. It's the same thing for second gen. Second gen only feel that they benefit if they're valued and cared for. And obviously, that care comes from their parents. And all parents of second gen love their children more than life. But only when it's shown will the second gen come to understand. Honestly, what I think a lot of second gen really want to see is that their parents truly, truly do love them. Of course, it's easy to say that you love someone. And it's easy to love someone and your children when they do as you say. But how easy is it when they don't listen to you? If a second gen doesn't come to church, will their parents still love them? Of course, we know that the answer is yes, their parents will still love them. But a lot of the arguing that parents and second gen have regarding going to service and their faith has to do with the fact that because their parents see the value of the word, and see the value of their children, since they know the word is so precious, more precious than the whole world, they want to give that word, that faith, to their world, to their children. It's just that second gen don't know that they don't realize, and it's because they don't really know the word. They haven't learned it yet. Which leads me to my second part of 2G Talks for today, Which, uh, we received a very interesting email from our 2G Talks email from one of our lovely viewers about a really pressing uh, situation regarding a second gen. So I'll just go ahead and give a short summary about it. So I'll start. There's a member who has been entrusted with managing a second gen and is guiding them back to Providence. So long story short. They recently were able to talk with the second gen and was very shocked to hear about all the things that they've been through. There were many hidden things from the second gen by his parents. His parents always told him to believe in Sansanim because he just should. And he never really understood the reason why. 
and he was never convicted on his own. His parents also took many preventative measures, such as deleting messages from ex-members who left Providence, who left a chat in the announcements, chat, from his phone in a really aggressive manner. I, the member, recently talked to the second gen and found out that he had actually found out about the slander situation the hard way through the Netflix documentary, quote unquote, and so lost his trust with his parents since his parents tried to hide everything from him. I am not one to say that this was bad parenting or anything, but honestly, I feel really bad for him. Imagine after everything that happened last year, this poor second gen had no one who un- this poor second gen really did not understand anything that was happening and was ingrained major doubt about Sunsanim because literally no one told him anything about any situation and he was kept under the dark for very long. The email continues. It says, He didn't know about the KJS situation, didn't know about the corrupt Korean justice system, and so in his mind, he thought South Korea, being so developed in industry, had a similar justice system as many other well-developed countries. I told him about how ridiculous the Korean justice system runs, and he was shocked to hear that. After sending him articles about our side of the story, I saw light in his eyes. I felt so bad for him because we are already at the end of 2024, and he had no clue what was going on. Was left all alone in 2023 to watch the nasty Netflix documentary by himself, and he told no one about it. He was so mad toward his parents. He is so thankful and is thankful to have an open conversation with me and openly seeks to have more Bible lessons once more. The email concludes with this member asking two questions. So I'll go ahead and read them. The first question is, what do you guys think about this situation? Should second gen be kept under the dark during their teenage years about what happened in 2023 and be explained in detail while Sunsenim is in prison right now? And the second question is, from what age should the truth be revealed about the Korean drama Oppenheimer that happened in 2023? And that's the end of the email. Whew. So that was a lot, right, guys? Let's get into it. Now, a disclaimer. Obviously, I'm not a parent. <laughs> so I really can't understand the immense difficulties that parents go through while raising their children. I mean, I have talked um, in detail and depth with my own mother about what it was like raising uh, second gen, especially as a single mother. But even then, I can only empathize, but I don't really know or realize. So please take what I say with a grain of salt and just know that I am going to be sharing. It's all going to be coming from my own point of view as a second gen and what I would want if I was in this situation. I also did discuss this situation with Eddie, who um, may or may not have already addressed this in his own segment of the podcast. But when we discussed it, it seemed as if we were on the same page. So, in general, I can see what the parents were trying to do. You know, parents always want to protect their child from any sort of pain, suffering, or even just confusion. But in doing so, what happens is that you actually take away one's autonomy and ability to discern for themselves. You know, Sansan is always saying, check and discern. So although I can feel and see the parents' heart and intentions, the situation in general, in my opinion, was not handled very well by the parents. Should second gen be kept in the dark during their teenage years regarding the craziness that happened in 2023? Um, no, I don't think so. I think if you treat second gen especially if we're talking about teenagers as if they're just little children kids who are incapable then they're going to be incapable they're not going to be able to do things on their own but if we treat them with a certain level of respect and almost as if they're adults like talking to them as if they are then they'll be able to have greater wisdom and a greater higher level mentality i don't think there's any reason to hide the truth you know, otherwise it could be misinterpreted as hiding it because there's lies. And especially with the access that teens have nowadays with their smartphones and the internet, 
if you don't tell them something, trust me, they're going to look it up themselves, which, as we read, is exactly what happened in this situation. Now, from what age should the truth be revealed about regarding all the Korea drama, the quote-unquote Oppenheimer that happened in 2023? Um, I'm not sure if there's a correct answer or if there's even a particular age that second gen should have this discussion. I would definitely say that by their teens, because this is when they're starting to figure out who they are as a person and whether or not they want Providence to be a part of who they are. So that means that they need all the facts. They need all the pieces to the puzzle. And honestly, I could equate the situation almost to when parents give their kids the talk. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? The talk. Is there a certain age that parents should give their kids the talk? You know, about the birds and the bees? (laughs) No, I don't think so. Because it's different for every kid. I am personally a major supporter in inquiry-based learning, which just means that when a student asks or when a child asks a question or has a proposition of something, then we can go ahead and discuss and talk about it in detail. And I would say that the same thing should be done here. Sansanam in the messages, of course, is always dropping hints, I would almost say lore, and things regarding 2023. He talks about people leaving, what happens when people leave, things like that. So it wouldn't be unheard of or crazy to expect for a child to ask their parents, simply out of curiosity, what was going on in the message. Of course, there are some second gen who may never ask their parents, and so maybe their parents would never tell them, which is, you know, obviously the situation that we do not want. So I think in general, a good overall overarching idea would be possibly to start a word study. What do I mean by that? I think especially after a particularly, I'll say, spicy message where Sansanam is talking a lot about or referring to 2023, having that time for a family word study or even just, you know, a group word study with second gen would be super beneficial. You know, perhaps something short and sweet because sitting for that long may kill our poor second gen, but just going out of our way to make it a habit of creating a really safe environment where discussion and even disagreement can take place. Because this is definitely important regarding the topic of 2023. KJS, since everything is so intense, definitely taking it nice and slow and having a continuous conversation with second gen would be the best. Even though it might be uncomfortable, I really don't think it should be a a one-time thing. That once you bring it up the first time, you just forget about it. It's more than likely that once you bring it up the first time and talk about it, they're not going to have that many questions right away. But probably, after a week or so of thinking about it, they may start coming up with questions, thoughts, or misunderstandings. And we want to make sure that rather than dismissing concerns, pushing them under the rug... We're able to address everything in detail. So is there a specific age? No. I think as long as it's being addressed in a clear, safe, moderated environment, probably around the age of their teens, so let's say, I don't know, 14, 15, that's when they usually start asking questions in general. Um, And we definitely don't want them to feel as if they can't ask questions. Nothing should be hidden or altered, especially by parents, just to shield their child. And I've talked about this, and I think Eddie and Daniel from Until the End have all talked about this, how important it is not just to protect members or not just to protect second gen because we're afraid of them leaving. That's going to, inherently, it'll create a bubble around these second gen. And although this is a bubble of pure and good intentions, eventually that bubble is going to pop. And so the reality of second gen and members like this will be shattered. Rather, I think it's so important that we create a nurturing environment in Providence strictly based on knowledge and truth. We need to equip members and second gen alike with the abilities and understanding of the word. 
the situation in Providence, Sansanim, Jesus, and most importantly, the Bible, right? It always comes back to the Bible. That way they can become the true owners of this history and the ideal world can take place. I know that um, Eddie has mentioned this before, but as second gen department leaders in America, we really are pushing to create a re-education system to ensure that we can have an outreach so that we can reach as many second gen in America so that they can start gaining and equipping themselves with the armor of God, right? We all need that helmet of salvation and we need to be able to wield that sword of the spirit. This way we can stop this type of unfortunate situation from happening again. Because to be completely honest, um, this is not the first time that I've heard something like this occurring. Um, Not to this extent, but definitely. I know it is really hard for second-gen parents, too, of course. Firstly, you know, if this is their first child, they've never raised a child before. And you have to raise them to be a bride of God. (laughs) With all of the second-gen teenage hormones and insanity, you know, teenagers in general, don't want to listen to anyone, let alone listen to their parents. So talk about an impossible situation, just raising second gen. But I want to give everyone hope and realize that with God, nothing is impossible. We just have to, like the message said, testify with wisdom and really become people who know the word well and so can testify for God's history really well. Lastly, To the member who sent this email, honestly, thank you for reaching out. And also, also, thank you so much for helping out the second gen. I'm really so inspired and I truly can see the Holy Trinity using you as their body to help and guide this precious life back to Providence. I hope I was also able to answer all of your questions um, adequately enough. And for everyone else, please feel free to leave any comments, um, especially whether you agree or even disagree with my statements. I am absolutely open to hearing other people's opinions and seeing how others would deal with second gen and having a discussion on even how we should address and talk about 2023 because this is a 1000 year complete testament history It's going to have to be talked about and going to have to be mentioned. So we're going to have to start preparing even now. And I would also love to hear if y'all have any other ideas or methods too on how to just help second gen in general. There's no Providence parenting books yet. (laughs) So maybe we should all start collaborating and making one. But who knows? So with that, I'll go ahead and wrap up 2G Talks. I know it was kind of a long one and super intense, but I hope you really enjoyed it. I'll talk with y'all next week. Just listen if you're mine. I'm burning with desire and the passion.